All right. Having fun out there with the Lee? Generic flavor text. So let's look at my stuff. I got an Aston Martin. I got a custom drift RX-7. That was my Subaru. That's my first car. That's the Plymouth. They give you those. And there's my Ferrari, which is DLC. The Ferrari, the classic Ferraris, were like additional DLC that was bundled with the game when I bought it. If you had the standard game, there were even less cars. So we're going to play with the, uh, the Plymouth. I'm just going to upgrade it a bit. Now I got a load of gift cars, which are basically callbacks. You can see the BM3, BM3, BMW M3 over there. You get that for beating the game because literally every box car, I think they think it's Pokemon and they think that everyone cares about the cars on the boxes from Need for Speed Underground 1 to Carbon. And that's a cool BMW. However, they give you the base model with no upgrades on it. So you never, you have to spend money to make it the BMW that you remember from Need for Speed Underground and Need for Speed Carbon. Making it completely useless as a post-game thing because then you have to spend about a hundred grand just to get it to the point where it's the same level as my Plymouth here. When I prefer the Plymouth already. You know what I mean? Yeah, I also have the Underground 1 car for being the story mode. And I have a drift car from Underground 2, I think. Oh, no, it's not a drift car. It's a 350Z. You get it for being the drift lessons. Drift missions. Story mode is really short in this. And it's a little disappointing. There's virtually no content to this game. There's virtually no post-game. Other than just doing the races again. And that's it. Like... You don't even have to have the best cars in the game by the end of the game. I beat this game with like this car and my Aston Martin which they gave you for free as trying to like pad the content. It's like a mini game challenge car that the black market sends you which is clearly like an apology thing of saying basically there was nothing in this game, we're sorry. Here's more content, here's some mini games along with the Ferraris and stuff. Basically, there's no cars in this game. We're sorry, here's some cars. What, you don't want to drive the Polestar? <laughs> like, what the fuck's a Polestar? Someone explain that to me. On the box of every game here, of the game here, and I'm like, what the fuck's a Polestar? So, yeah, I'm gonna go quiet, I think. Oh! Yeah, just another thing. The game's physics fuck up once you get to a certain level of, like, upgrades, and the cars start doing this hilarious hot-rodding thing where if you, at low speeds, press the NOS button, it just does a wheelie, a high-pass wheelie, which means you lose control of the car. And honestly, at high speeds and at high levels, I'm having a lot of trouble keeping this car going the way I want it to. And I know it's a muscle car, but we'll see that I also have trouble doing the same thing with the Testarossa later, uh, which is both are set up to just be very accurate on the road and no drift or anything, uh, on road only. And honestly, a lot of the cars don't have well in this game. It's a very pretty game and it's very fun when it's working but like there's a lot of bugs and there's a lot of like handling of the physics of the car is not great. You'll see here I'm having right trouble getting it around the corner. Uh, I had to use the handbrake and the brake. It's but I'm trying to get it to drift but it's not because I set it not to drift which is my own fault but like then I do and it just the drifts are slow, they slow you right now. It's just... Mm. Anyway, I'm just gonna showcase, uh, there's about half an hour of me just like, doing 
the, the, the nighttime races are more fun because more stuff happens. Like, you're gonna, you can see I have a heat level. And if I get a high enough heat level and cops see me, they chase me. In the daytime, it's just go around and do the race, but you won't get disturbed by the cops at all unless you drive out. Uh, so, and they're not very often on the screen in the daytime. So, to be honest, if you want to actually have any fun, you have to drive at night. But then you don't earn money, you earn rep, which is just a smooth box. Uh, the more rep you get, the more unlocks you get, and then basically you get like, the ability to uh, to buy all of these upgrades and stuff. Well, I'll talk about that quickly. You have to, to get the ultimate upgrades, in to get the ultimate upgrades in every single part, uh, you have to... You have to, uh, sorry, I thought I could hear something. <laughs> I think that's in the game. Yeah, you, you have to, uh, McQueen. Like, I made a joke about this one before, McQueen. It's like, I feel like this game doesn't know who Steve McQueen is, so they're probably making a Lightning McQueen joke, which is whack as fucking shit. Uh... I mean, I might be just being a dick. <laughs> like, but anyway, uh, what was I saying? Uh, so yeah, there are heat races, which are a really nice mechanic, but basically are very hard to complete and are done in such a way where they don't make it the main storyline, but if you don't do them... Oh, I'll do the wheelie again. Uh, if you don't do them, you have to do like six in a row where the, the like unlock is something that the game has already unlocked for you because you have a high enough rep level. So it's like, ooh, you can, if you get a heat level of three to five and have this much money and you start this race without being caught by the cops and then race and beat the race without being caught by the cops, you'll get this, like, par. And the par is, like, elite level par, or pro level par. And you're like, are you fucking serious? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, I want the ultimate part, like, the only, you know, the only part that I can... that I'm looking for, the part that I have to win this race, this high heat race for. And you're making me win like seven consecutive high heat races, which are optional, in which I just unlock a, I don't know, like a, you know, like elite part, which I already have equipped to the car. <laughs> like, so, yeah, that's done. Also, unlike most wanted, there are no set pieces a la split second where you just hit something and a whole bridge falls on someone or like any of this and that's really key for how carbon and most wanted taught you in the ps2 era to deal with cop chases is basically get the cops to get wrecked and that kind of element is gone which is strange because it feels like a very burnout element and i'm pretty sure members of criterion are now working on a lot of these Need for Speed games and that's just not in this game, which is such a shame because I love doing that. So now when you see cops, you have to ram them and knock them out or just keep doing sick jumps that the AI is literally too stupid to land and then they wreck themselves. And in one of these chases, I literally just do a, a like handbrake turn in a car park and one of the cops tries to copy my handbrake turn to follow me and just flips himself over and wrecks himself. <laughs> so the AI is just like, not bright, <laughs> like, you know? And it's good because once they hit bright level AI, like level four, you're basically fucked because they can drive faster than you due to rubber banding and uh, you can't outrun them anymore and uh, they now have good AI, so it means that you're having to just basically chain jumps together in the hope that they'll wreck themselves by hitting it slightly wrong, and then they don't. 
the alternative is just pulling your car over into like a car park or the dockyard area and the AI stops working out how to path because the AI seems to be like more focused on the road. Like it will path really well on the roads. You see there's a cop there, that's why I have break turn. So I'm just not dealing with that shit right now, I'm just trying to play. Uh, yeah, like, the AI pathing is basically designed so that, like, if you go off-road, the cars don't don't make sense anymore, and the cars start going, uh, herp a derp and just, like, kind of, like, fall over themselves. Which means if you're off-roading, if you're in an off-road car, and you're caught by cops and you just take a dirt track, half the cars will just wreck themselves trying to follow you over a basic dirt jump. But no one's driving off the, the off-road, because the off-road lowers your performance. Like, who the fuck thought that was a good idea? Like, my Subaru Impreza's got maximum on everything, except for the ultimate parts, which I've mentioned. And it's got, like, a performance rating of about 150. Because the off-road modifications lower your performance rating. Which just means that it can barely enter any race. <coughs> Which means I never drive it. Oh, that was a bit of a jump. Seems to be skipping this. So yeah, I landed that a little funny apparently and it just made me swing to the right for some reason. So these cops are kind of assholes, but I'm gonna go by and wait just watch the chase, so, yeah. You can see I'm driving pretty fast, and like GTA has got a circle of effect here, and I can't outrun the circle of effect because the cop is literally, like, glued to the speed that I'm doing due to rubber banding, because it's a very arcade game, as the speed is known to be, so the AI can just mimic your speed no matter what car you're driving. And the in-game hints on the website literally says to you, try out running them. And at certain heat levels you cannot, the car will just glue to your speed level, and just copy your speed, or just go slightly faster. That's what I'm talking about. One of them wrecked themselves because I turned around and near the water and they just drove off into the water. <laughs> like, oh, I will arrest these fish. Okay. Just observe how I try and outrun them, because it takes me a while. Getting left behind is not how I wanted the night to end. <laughs> 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 That's hilarious. Someone's soul. So yeah, like basically it means that like, especially in this moment, I think just the power of the street line power I'm putting down would just allow me to outrun them, but they glue to me. There's no way that those cars can do the same speed that I'm doing, but they are all the time, so. <clears throat> I remember this being a problem in Most Wanted, though, so I'm going to be fair. In Most Wanted, you could just do the highway in Most Wanted's thing, and just constantly build up your heat rating, because you'd never be able to uh, you'd never be able to outrun them, and then just go into the town and hit you stunt things and it would just like kill off your pursuers and you could just carry on. Here there are no stunt hey, And you'll see the I jump ramps are rare. Here I try the thing where I just make their power fingers screwy by going off road for a little bit. It does not work because I literally just was in plain sight the whole time. I start looking for a jump ramp because I know there's one down here somewhere. I can't remember where. That is. <laughs> and every single speed thing that I'm going through is increasing my heat and my ramp. So every time I'm speeding away from them and I go for a speed trap, it ups my heat a little bit, which actually kind of makes your job harder. <laughs> well, again, a weird jump cut. Oh, it. Oh, yeah, you missed the main... Oh, that's bad. My recording fucked up there, sorry. Oh, no. 
I want that driver found. No okay, so it kind of fucked up there, but I did like a jump before the first one. You can see it kind of jump cutted, and yeah, the pathing screws up when it, it does that. Like they try and copy you, but they always inexpertly hit the jump. And it always means they land roof first, or like they hit something and they have a lower health bar than you, so... And like I said, like, there's only a few places where there are jumps. There's only a few places where there are jumps, and then they're in a long chain. So you basically just go, oh yeah, I'll just go to that chain and just do those jumps back to back to back and they won't be able to follow me because there's too many jumps. If they fuck up one of them, they go into the water and their health bar drops to zero. Or they just roll over and their health bar drops to zero. And then they go, my car's wrecked over the thing and you're just like, ha ha. Now you can see there's a whole army of them trying to follow me there. So I go and hide behind this building. Because <laughs> they just drive like that. <laughs> you just go, oh, okay, then uh, now they're gone, I'll just... I'm so sneaky. So a little collectible spray paint thingy here, which I do like. You collect spray paint tags and it gives you extra vinyl deck or decals or whatever they call them. I don't know the kids these days. <coughs> And then I say fuck yeah and go in. Good so that's the first night. You can chill out now. So this rep is meaningless. It's a currency you cannot spend. It just levels you up and makes you get better unlocks. So basically you need like a couple of million rep to play the game in full. So, when are you gonna get your own place? Don't listen to him. The game's story mode is painfully short. So here's the Aston Martin. RX-7, Subaru, Chevrolet. That one's a DLC to the Chevrolet. Uh, and a bunch of them are like DLC login bonus things. Here, just have an entire fleet before you start the game. So we're gonna drive the Testarossa. Testarossa, whatever. Cause I like the car. But it also has the problem of too powerful NOS just fucks up the control of the car. The story mode is really short in this game. Once you've defeated the big bad, another big bad appears and the game does nothing to address it. At all. Like, you don't fight that secondary big bad. They seem to think that there's going to be a sequel to this dog pile of crap. Uh... It's EA, so yeah, they'll fart out another bad sequel because they're EA. That's what they are. But I'm sat there like, maybe it feels like it just wants me to play the game until I have hit a certain rep level and there's like a secret like second half of the game. That would be great. Like, you know, if I just keep playing the game, I build my rep up to max, I hit rep level say 50 and the game goes, great, okay, now you can start the second half of the story mode because the first half is so short that it feels like what the hell, but I literally have trophies stating otherwise, saying, well done, you beat the game. And I'm like, that's it? You'll beat the game basically in like 10 to 15 hours if you just do the story mode. You gotta grind for some certain specific cars that you can take off road and do drifts in and get to a performance level where the game lets you play or a rep level. But if you took those caps away, you could just go through the whole game. Like I beat the final boss with either my Plymouth, I think it was my Plymouth, which is the first car I ever actually bought. <laughs> like, you know. Anyway, I'm just gonna, I think that's enough from me. Uh, I'll just let the rest of this play out. You just watch me drive the Testarossa badly. There's another cut there. Uh, my PS4 doesn't like uh, recording this. Or it's uh, recorded for too long. I'll keep that in mind next time. I'll sign off there and uh, you can just watch the rest of this and make your own decisions for yourself.
Yeah. Bye. <laughs> Good place to finish. Now the best place to finish is watching me nos through this tunnel and immediately drive the car up the wall because it does a sick wheelie and I'm like, <laughs> For some reason it hits the wall instead of like sliding along the wall, it just goes Durr! like it's hit something like solid when it has it's going along. Okay, now I'll shut up. Have fun with this. Watch me fail a cop chase. If I feel like I'll do something else. I'm on Gran Turismo now. Maybe I'll do that. I don't know. Bye. Bye. Bye.
fog control that sends them in. Someone gets right. Man, you made a mess of this one. Good as new now. <laughs> 